Hey everyone, it did not take me 10 extra seconds to go live because I had to burp. So don't start that rumor. <laughs> Hi, um, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. We have Agent Chat Live. So Agent Chat Live is a spinoff of my regular show, Pub Talk Live. And it's meant to help you get to know literary agents a little bit better. And I see Jay and Tamara are already here. So welcome to y'all. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to introduce today's guest. Um, Amy began working in publishing in 2015, first as an intern at Entangled Publishing, PS Literary Agency, and Holloway Literary Agency. In 2019, she joined Corvisiero Corvus Literary Agency as an intern and was promoted to the position of apprentice. In 2020, Amy became an associate literary agency agent at the Jennifer DiCiara Literary Agency. Oh, why can't I say words today? Literary agency. I promise I can say those words. She has been in education for the last 21 years, teaching teens the joy of books and reading. Amy's true passion is helping to get diverse writers published so that teens can all see themselves in the books they read. When Amy isn't reading or chatting with her clients, she can be found binge watching Netflix and snuggling with her three rescue dogs. So please welcome Amy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hello. Thank Hello. you for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me. Oh, we have, it seems like we have an international audience today because Tamara's from Australia. Carrie is here mm. from New Zealand. Awesome. Hello, everyone. All right. <laughs> um, also, you can find Amy's um, uh, website or profile on the JD Lit uh, site and also Twitter and Instagram in the description down below so you can find out more about her now um so <laughs> for those watching and also for amy my goal here is to help potential clients get to know literary agents a little bit better um viewers are welcome to drop questions in the comments but i did want to say start off that we won't really be asking any questions that like a google search or like any agent can answer things like word count genre definition stuff like that and i also won't be asking things like pre queries or even a lot of like query advice questions it's more to get to know the agent a little bit better so um Oh, Jay. No, I just tried the countdown thing like once. And first thing you heard was my sentence. Oh, that's weird. Because I had it had 20 seconds of uh, just the, the video. I mean, the image up. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But I'll take a look at it. Oh, tomorrow. <laughs> if you want to go ahead and type in your question tomorrow so I can show it on screen when we get to that point. That'd be great. All right. <laughs> um. So Amy... Um. T Tamara has a good question that she's asked like several of the agents that have come on and I really like the answers. So, um, but we're going to start with an easy one. Um, what categories and genres do you represent? What do you like to see in your inbox? Oh, well, that's a really good question. I did just announce uh, recently on Twitter that I am closing to fantasy. <laughs> I have this issue with fantasy that I have too much of it right now <laughs> um, because I love it. Uh, so I had to unfortunately close for right now for fantasy because, um, you know, I can only have so many clients on my roster who are writing <laughs> middle grade fantasy. Um, I actually started off really, uh, I love teen fiction. So I love everything YA. Um, I have really grown in the past year to love middle grade. So I have a lot of middle grade clients right now, but Again, most of them write fantasy. So I'm really looking for some different stuff in middle grade, like mystery or adventure, first romance, um, you know, so the contemporary genre. Um, same with YA, uh, more, more contemporary mystery. Um, and I'm really on the lookout for an awesome adult thriller. I just, I, I just want something like... Um, uh, what's Alyssa Cole's new one called? Mm. Yes. When the, right now, but when the, I can see the cover. <laughs> I can too. <laughs> but that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, an adult. And I, I mean, I'm a horror fanatic. So anything mm. with ghosts and fear and um, hauntings and just love it. So anything ha horror wise would be awesome. 
Awesome. All right. Um, it looks like Malia knows uh, some of your clients, Sarah and Taylor. <laughs> yes. And they are awesome at fantasy. They absolutely are. I know. And it's funny that I read Sarah's first um, offer to her. Then Taylor, um, I did a, a giveaway with uh, Zoom calls and mm. um, a couple one chapter uh, critiques and query critiques. And Taylor was the first person to, um, you know, put her name down to win a Zoom call with me. So I had a Zoom call with her and and she pitched to me her her story. And I was like, please send me the whole thing. And what's her full name? Um, Taylor Kemper. Mm -hmm. I think it's Cantor Kemper online. Okay. Um, but she writes middle grade fantasy um, that's just out of this world. And she actually, um, I had already rejected hers. Uh, read the first 10 pages and it just wasn't for me. And here she did a complete huge revision, went from mm -hmm. YA to middle grade. And when I compare, because you know, you can go back in Query Tracker, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I pulled up her original submission, it was completely different. Mm. Um, that just shows revisions and hard work or can do amazing things. Um, yeah, definitely. Which is why I always say when I, I get asked, can I resubmit to you? And if you do a significant revision, absolutely. So that's funny. And I didn't know at the time that Sarah and Taylor knew each other. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, publishing is a small world, so. <laughs> it's teeny tiny. Yeah. Um, all right. So why did you get into agenting? Well, I started off as a writer. Um, <laughs> uh, I went the self-pub self route uh, many, God, five, five plus years ago, I think. Um, I had written kind of a new adult horror back when new adult was, actually trying to be a thing yeah. um and it just it just didn't sell it wasn't what um editors were looking for pub houses so i self-published it and thought i can write but how much fun would it be to get writers published you know because you know i i have a sister who dances and although she loves to dance she was never going to be on broadway so mm -hmm. instead she chose to have a job that she was behind the scenes helping the dancers who could possibly become Broadway stars, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of the route I went because I love books and, you know, I, I love to write, but I'd also like to help people get their books on the shelves. So I think that's kind of why I went that route eventually. Awesome. All right. So I have to preface this next question oh, because... <laughs> When I, when I ask this question straight up, people are too humble. <laughs> so that's why the preface. So um, okay. the purpose of this is to give you a chance to brag about yourself. So <laughs> take advantage of it. Okay. Um, yes. So if someone's thinking about querying you and your wish list lines up with their work, um, why would someone want to work with you? What are the reasons why you're, you would be a great <laughs> agent for them? Well, <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to channel my client. I know. Don't be humble. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I guess I, I would say I, I'm pretty. I'm I'm on. I'm, I'm honest. I'm not necessarily you know mean and blunt, but I'm pretty honest. So I'm not going to not tell my clients the truth. Um, but I'm also going to make sure that nobody messes with them. <laughs> So, um, you know, I, I think being honest and open and um, I let them know every step of the way what's happening. I don't do anything without talking to them first because, you know, first and foremost, it's their career. It's, you know, it's not mine. I re represent them and help guide them, but it's their career ultimately. So I think being honest and I, I'm a big cheerleader for other people. Again, I may not be able to do it for myself, but I can do it for other people. So I, I generally do that online too, on Twitter. Um, so that might be why. I mean, we can ask, we can ask them. <laughs> and I like to have fun. I communicate with them all the time. We, you know, we have our own chats. And mm -hmm. um, so it's not just, uh, just a working relationship for the most part. I mean, they can come to me if they need help with something or, 
you know, if they need somebody to kind of bounce ideas off of, I'm just not the the end person. Yeah. Sorry, I lost my, my earbud. Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. I mean, I, I don't know what else. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, Kath Catherine, glad you can make it live too. Oh, I know Catherine. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, well, I guess now is a good time to say um, if you're wa watching the replay, which I know a lot of people end up watching when we're not live, I'm glad that you're watching, even if you can't um, chat with us today. And if you're listening to the podcast version, same. <laughs> um, all right. So on my Patreon, um, people can submit questions ahead of time if you're a Patreon supporter. Um, and so we have two questions today from Patreon supporters. Uh, I'm just going to mute myself real quick. I was getting that echo again. It's still there. Oh, figure it out. All right. So um, Lodestar says, I see you're a big Schitt's Creek fan. Same. <laughs> if you could propose a business joint venture with Rose Apothecary, what would it be? Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> Y'all are killing me. That's a hard question. A joint venture. <sighs> Well, first of all, I would do anything with them. <laughs> Can I just, I, I would eat dirt um, <laughs> because uh, David is just, uh, I don't know. I would, I would be best friends with him um, and the whole Rose family, but um, oh gosh, joint venture. I don't know. Maybe, uh, you know what? Maybe we could do like, I'm not a big makeup person, but I've been into like lipstick. Um, and that's all Saritza Hernandez's fault, by the way. She mm, taught yeah. me like, you just got to rock your lipstick. And I was like, I want to. <laughs> 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 because she does it so well. Um, but maybe, maybe go into like some kind of, I don't know, cosmetic line or lipstick line or something. Because oh, I could cool. just see, <laughs> I could see that being just a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Some kind of maybe like moisturizing. Yeah, like beeswax, yeah. like something from one of the local farms. Yeah. Um, remember when they did the cheese? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wanted to eat all that cheese too, by the way. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's a fun question. Um, all right. So we have another question from Patreon supporter Jay Lynn, um, who I think is here today live. Um, seeing that you've worked for a variety of agencies, is there a benefit to one agency over another? And also she asks, in what ways can an agency matter more than the agent themselves or can it, I guess? Uh, so yes, <laughs> to everything. It, do it does matter. Um, in, in my experience, without saying too much, um, the best the best thing in an agency that you need is support. Um, and not just the, listen, publishing is rough. Let me just be honest. It's the slowest moving creature in the world. Um, and if you ever watch Twitter, you will see all kinds of drama all the time. Um, so you need like emotional support and then you need, you know, your work support. So you need to have somebody in charge or at least a bunch of people that you can go to uh, to ask questions who are knowledgeable, who have a lot of background in publishing. And then you need somebody to say, yes, you're right. But now here's what you have to do to get over that hump or whatever it is. Um, so that's like the most important thing. And I think, you know, that all kind of boils down to communication. <laughs> um, so if you if you have an agency that you can communicate with, and they communicate with you, um, that's probably the best place to be. Um, so, you know, and, and I found that um, at the Kiara Literary Agency, just because they're so supportive and my boss, Jennifer, is fantastic. Um, I also have a couple of uh, CLA former people that I also kind of knew a little bit beforehand. So it was nice to go into a new agency knowing so, a mm. couple of people. You know, we have Aaron and Tara there. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. all helpful. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I see a lot. Uh, well, I've talked to a lot of agents and there's, there, 
was a lot more difference in agencies in the way that they operated than I thought there were before I started talking to agents, yeah. um, which was, which was an eye opener. So yeah. Um, Oz, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. There's so much I could say, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna behave. <laughs> All right. So, well, actually, this segues quite, quite nicely into my next question. So um, a lot of times when I hear this question asked of industry people, the it's phrased as like, if you had a magic wand, what would you change about the industry? Right. But, um, you know, we live in the real world. <laughs> so um, hypothetically, if you were, you know, someone with a lot of powers, like the CEO of Bob, Penguin Random House or whatever, you know, someone who has a lot of sway. Um, what would you change about the industry that is doable, I guess, um, to help kind of make it a better place for everyone? Oh, I mean, yeah. you can list a couple if you have them. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be here a lot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I, I I think we've started this already. Um, at least the conversations have been there. I just don't think there's been quite the change and movement yet with uh, in relation to diversity in publishing. Um, it, there's such a disparity between, I mean, uh, well, let's just get to it. There's just a disparity between debut white writers and debut, say, black authors. I mean, there there is. Um, I would love to see that gap close to see more people able to get their foot in the door in publishing, whether it's an editing position or an agent position or, you know, any, any, anywhere in between. Um, I think we figured out with the, the pandemic that we don't all need to live in New York to be in publishing. So that has been, I think, a really positive <laughs> thing out of bad situation. Um, so I think, you know, more people from other places other than New York City are going to be able to, you know, work in publishing. Um, so that's, you know, started. The doors have kind of cracked open um, for some of that to happen. But I would like to see it like kind of just busted wide open and, you know, let everybody at the table and make it affordable to, to do. That's what I would do. All right. Yeah, I, I remember... Um when I first started getting involved uh, with, you know, the book industry and realizing it was centered in New York city, which is a thing that you may not know if you're not really, you know, involved with the industry. Um, I was like, but why New York city? <laughs> it's so expensive. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. It's so expensive. But I love imagine it. If like the publishing industry was like, you know what now let's say Savannah, Georgia is going to be our new hub, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so interesting um, it, would, it would definitely be interesting i mean and i get it it's a big metro metropolis but mm -hmm. um yeah i had a friend who had this teeny teeny tiny apartment in washington heights and i never i'll never forget going there and i love i loved going there it was 1200 dollars a month for this literally this little tiny room a kitchenette and a bathroom there mm -hmm. was there was one tiny closet it was like a glorified coat closet, but that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh gosh, it was only a couple hundred square feet. <laughs> it was $1,200 a month. Was yeah. like, wow. And that wasn't even, you know, she wasn't in Manhattan or anything. I mean, it was down off of like 125th street, but it was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's go to Tamara's question. Okay. Uh, original question where to go okay um if you could work with one writer who's already published who would it be in my like if they stopped working with the agent or whatever and you had the opportunity to work with them oh my gosh that's so hard who asked that question tomorrow, tomorrow. that's not fair <laughs> <sighs> can i list a couple sure if you want to oh who would be okay first of all uh, let's just say I would love to work with Jason Reynolds because mm -hmm. I think that man is so smart and so funny. And I think uh, I would learn so much from him. <laughs> um, but he's just, every time I hear him speak and talk about stories and books, like he's just a joy. I would love to work with him. Um, so there would be one. 
Um, and he gives great hugs too. Damn it. I never got a hug from him. Aww. No, last BEA, I actually got to meet him. I was so excited. I was like shaking. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to meet him. Yeah, he's so nice. I, I um, get a hug. He came to, uh, he did a library event in my library. Um, and then we also did, there was an event later in the evening with Lisa Lucas. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, when I saw him there, uh, he was super nice. I was, yeah. Him and yeah. Brandon were both there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's just... Oh, he's the best. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> well, this is really hard because, like, Laurie Hall Anderson is amazing. Oh, yeah. I would love to. She's also super smart. Um, Jonathan Mayberry is. Oh, I love Jonathan uh, too. He's one yeah. of my favorites. Um, I used to go to his signings all the time down in the Do at the Doylestown Bookshop, and um, I remember when he told he told me he was moving to California. I'm like, what? what? Well, I'm going to go make some movies. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like just his comic book background and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. Um, oh, he, you know, he, he, we would talk about Supernatural and Buffy and, you know, he's just awesome. And zombies. Yeah. I mean, come on. You wrote some of the best <laughs> zombie books ever. I mean, these huge, thick books, but mm -hmm. so good. Um, <laughs> I mean, you have Stephen King. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to work with him though. Yeah. Like, I think I would just be so in awe. I wouldn't be able to say any words. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Um, You're looking at your shelves. Um, <laughs> oh gosh. All of them. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just so many. Courtney Summers mm -hmm. and Angie Thompson. Uh, Angie Thomas, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah like all of them. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, you they're all so different. They bring so yeah. much to the table. Like, if you could just put them all into one. But, yeah. <laughs> sorry. All right. <laughs> Tamara, I hope that helped. I just love all books. I'm sorry. I think the first question, the first time she asked that question was with Matt Belford. And his answer was like an author um, that I know from a conference that we go to every year. And I was like, that's so weird. It's such a small world. Cause it, it wasn't like, like a super famous author. Like everyone knows Stephen King or whatever, you know, but um, I was like, Oh, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So if you sign a client, what, uh, what can they expect after that? What does your process normally look like? Um, and what kind of communication style do you have? And Tamara also asked, oh, it wasn't Tamara. Who was it? Someone asked, oh, it's Catherine. Do you Catherine. consider yourself an editorial agent? So kind of all that in one. <laughs> okay. So what to expect? Um, you'll, you'll get a lot of emails from me. <laughs> um, probably write a synopsis. Give me your picture. I need a bio. Um, <laughs> uh, let's talk about your edits. Um, because usually, usually, uh, either on and off, uh, uh, off. Okay. I'm done. I can't talk. Um, an offer call, um, or before I might send the, um, the author of their manuscript back with my inline edits and notes, um, which is very similar to what I do with my current clients when they send something new to me. Um, I don't necessarily write a really long edit letter. I kind of do, you know, in document notes so that they can see exactly where I'm talking about. Um, so whether it's before the call or after the call, we kind of talk about, you know, what did I, how many, how many revisions do I think need to happen before it gets submitted? Um, so they'll get that and then we'll talk about it. Um, for the most part, uh, my clients so far have been pretty good about just changing things. <laughs> Usually by the time I get it, it's very little. Um, I've had two of my clients actually assigned them after they did an R and R for me. So they had significant notes on their first pieces um, and then came back with completely different stories. Um, what else? Let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm just like kids. I don't remember what the rest was. Oh, an editorial agent. Yes. Oh, and lots of emails from me and DMS and, you know, random things. Um, you know, bring them into the group that we have, like group chat that we have and 
um, do a lot of introductions and things like that because they all have their own chat and talk mm -hmm. about things that, you know, they can, can complain together because they're all, in, you know, in the same boat. Um, I think I'm editorial. Um, I try to get things as clean as possible. I mean, if they're plot holes, then we work on that. Um, you know, but the story has to be there to begin with for me to to offer. Um, and I have to be sucked in, you know, you know, editing, that's not a big deal to me. Um, you know, big picture stuff, you know, we can always fix, but the story at least has to be there and the writing should be close. Mm -hmm. um, if it's really, really not ready, it's probably not going to get an offer from me right away. All right. Um, so we're gonna, it's like a little bit of an interlude. It's the quick question round. So oh God, I have to be fast. Okay. Yeah. Just try to answer whatever the first thing that comes to your mind, you know, no, don't think about it. Just, just say it. Um, so the first question though, again, has like a little, uh, story attached to it. So originally when I was coming up with, um, the concept for this interview series, um, I didn't know what to call it because like titles are like my weakness. Like I've never titled a book I've written. Like I'm so bad at titles. <laughs> um, and I think it was Lodestar suggested that I call it snack time with an agent. Oh, which, I don't have a snack though. It's okay. <laughs> it's not <laughs> called that. <laughs> but um, I really, I liked it because I thought it conveyed like kind of the casualness and the like, you know, the atmosphere that I wanted. But I was also afraid that it would apply. It was only for kid lit agents. Okay. Because it has kind of, you know, that. So that's where the first question comes from. So okay. we'll go ahead and start. What is your favorite snack? Potato chips and dip. It's mm, a good one. Um, what, is like your <laughs> what is your preferred caffeine source? Coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. Me too. Take that tea brigade. If any of you are here. <laughs> I'll drink tea if, like, if I need to. Like no, they because I don't drink tea, so, yeah. Especially, well, can I can I say if it's, like, a hot toddy kind of tea, then that would be yeah. better. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's team tea. Jay came in. <laughs> yeah, no, it's coffee. It is coffee. <laughs> All right. Um, is there a word or words that you rationally hate? That I hate, oh. No. And you know what? I did hate a word. And then I watched the boys. And I don't hate that word anymore. It's a C what? word. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch the boys, you'll get totally desensitized to that word. So, <laughs> All right. Um, since we're in this age of media, is there a TV show or movie that you'd like to see rebooted? Oh, stop freaking rebooting stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Listen, they're trying to reboot Firefly and Buffy and like, okay, I'm done. There's so much new stuff out mm -hmm. that needs to be seen on the screen. Let's just start producing that, please. So your answer is no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, when the Buffy thing came out, I was like, <sighs> I was angry. <laughs> All right. Um, and who's your favorite superhero? Oh, Wonder Woman. Nice. All right, cool. Um, so we're going to go to Jay's question here. What grabs you in the query, the simple pa sample pages and the full? When do you know you want to make the call? Oh, I just actually told an author this. I know by chapter three if I'm in a call. And then I have to force myself to keep reading and not send an email, um, which I broke that last well last week um but i did not send a i want to talk email it was like this is really awesome i'll let you know when i'm done reading email mm. <laughs> <laughs> because it was so awesome but i usually know by chapter three if i'm going to offer if it's good enough to get me that that far and i'm like sucked into it um and then i usually know for sure by probably page 100 because usually if you're going to start to see anything missing or anything sagging it's going to be around that middle so 100 150 page you know area that's when I know for absolute certain but I I don't email until the very last page although sometimes it's torturous 
you like slap your own hand I'm like no <laughs> <laughs> no I've actually had to do that close the email close the email close the email don't do it because you never know what's going to happen it could all fall apart in the end mm -hmm. um, what what draws me in something a unique storyline um, sometimes the comps really draw me in if they're like very different um, like comping something that I'm really into at, at the time. Like if you comp Sh Shit's Creek, I'm probably gonna be like, oh, okay, I have to read at least the first chapter and see what's going on here. Um, yeah, if you have a YA Shit's Creek, please, <laughs> me. Um, you know, something like that would bring me in. I just read Malia's question. Yeah. Do agents actually use the words, let's have the call in the email to authors? <laughs> Or do you never trust, or do you never call people unless it is the call? I don't call it. Well, I say let. I want to chat or let's chat. It's time to chat. Something like that yeah. in the email. Um, and sometimes the the when the author responds eventually to that offer and says yes, I, I've gotten. Let's do this <laughs> as their subject, which is funny. Um, but sometimes it's the call. I, I know other people say it's time to talk or, you know, something mm -hmm. like, I think Eric Smith said that it's time to, I think it's time to talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think, think say, let's chat. I think my agent it has been a couple of years, but I think she said, um, something like, Hey, do you have time for a phone call next week or something? Cause mm -hmm. it was like at the end of the week. Um, so it was very casual sounding. <laughs> Yeah, and and to answer the other the other part of that, do you call or ask for a call? I I usually don't offer right away. I usually like to talk to the the mm -hmm. author first just to make sure there's a personality match. Um, you know, like I said, I'm pretty open and honest and kind of all over the place sometimes. Um, so, you know, I need to make sure that we're on the same page with how we work. Mm -hmm. um, not that, not that I'm saying not, you know, if you're reserved, that's a problem or an introvert. I'm kind of introverted when I'm not, you know, doing this, but, um, you know, you want to at least have the same goal. Um, I'm not here to just sell one book for an author and then be done. Um, so, you know, more career oriented for, for my clients. So if you want to, you know, one book to hit the New York Times bestseller and then you're out, probably not going to offer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I like, had that yet, though. like the, do you have any more books in you? And they're like, no. <laughs> I'm like, well, why? Why? It seems like no, a lot usually, of I, and I do ask that, or I say, what are you writing now? Mm -hmm. And if they, usually the response is they've got like 15 story ideas in their head. Yeah. I'm like, okay, can we narrow it down to one? <laughs> Mm -hmm. They're like, well, I could do this. I'm like, okay, that's what, that's what, if, that, if we work together, that's what you can do first. Okay. I thought I had to sneeze for a second. That's okay. right. <laughs> Tamara, if you're talking about Shit's Creek, you're correct. You do need to watch that show. It's fine. Oh my gosh. Tamara, watch the show. Oh, it is so good. My heart though. You're going to freaking cry. I I'm just telling you you're going to cry. I just like sobbed uncontrollably. Yeah. I've, uh, I've watched the whole thing through like two or three times and uh -huh. I've cried like crazy the whole time. Yeah. It is a comedy though, I guess. <laughs> like, yes, except the, yeah, it's just, it tugs at the heart. It's not yeah. like, it's not like sad. It's just so stinking sweet. Mm. Like, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I could talk about shit's Creek the whole time. <laughs> or the boys. Uh -huh. And then that would just get really bad really quickly. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So what is your single best query letter tip? Oh, um, actually tell me about your book. Um, I, you can't even imagine how many query letters, queer, query letters I've gotten where it tells me absolutely nothing about the story they, they're trying to sell me. <laughs> um, you know, it's, Hey, this is me. Or I've actually gotten a whole query letter of, Hey, this is why I'm, I'm querying you. And it's like, I, I, you know, kissing up to a point is okay, but I don't need to hear about me. You know, I want to hear about your book. 
Um, and if I have to go all the way down to the sample pages to figure out what it is you're sending me, I may not get that far. Mm -hmm. So tell me what your story is about. And query letters don't have to be perfect, but they should have some basic things in it, like word count, story title, even if it's terrible, um, you know, the genre and, you know, a blurb at the very least. All right. Um, uh, Catherine had asked earlier, I forgot, um, do you yeah. rep graphic novels? Not yet, but, okay. but I will preface it with that is a goal for next year. Okay, cool. Um, okay, this is kind of just like a for fun question. Okay. Um, what is a good literary name for a cat or a dog? Oh, a literary name. Well, Poe is always good, mm. um, especially if it's a black cat. Um, I don't know, murder or <laughs> see, I'm just gonna go into <laughs> I also kind of like animal names that have people names. So oh, mm. like Dave. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a like a female animal name. I don't know. Siren or um Jay suggested catechus. Oh catechus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> um my dog actually has a name. He's named after a character from a book. Oh really? Mm -hmm. His name is Jasper. Huh. I, I got you. him about 11 or 12 years ago. Aww. <laughs> oh, Tamara's kit is, kitty is named Sadie, Courtney Summers' book. Ah, oh, I love that book. Yeah. I love that book. It is a great Audible book, by the way. Oh, yeah. I listened to it on audio, yes. too. That is awesome. All right. Um, what is your favorite thing about being a literary agent? Um, well, other than reading fun stories, I get to talk to people all the time, um, which sometimes is scary, but I think with the pandemic and being on zoom all the time, I, I think a lot of us have kind of gotten over some of that. Um, you know, being on, I mean, I see my face way too much on the screen. Um, but I think it's fun, you know, to, you know, know that whoever you're offering to is going to possibly I'll be on the bookshelves one day that you can go in and like take it off the shelf and be like I help this author work on this mm -hmm. book I think that's that's the most exciting part of it to know that that could happen yeah 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 when I was a publicist um I'd go to bookstores and like even though I've seen it you know digitally uh, like look for the acknowledgments where my name is <laughs> Oh. I mean, that's just like a fun little thing. That's not like the reason why I did it, obviously, but it was fun. No, that is fun. Um, Grace asks, what's an automatic deal breaker for a query letter? Sending me something I don't rep. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like I, I haven't, I mean, I have in my bio, like, don't send me this. And I still get this. And, and, I, and I mean, like something that's maybe extremely violent and I know her gets violent and like there's a place for it but I think like just glorifying it especially when it's kids like mm. forget it if I see that in it I'm, I'm not even reading it so that would yeah. be that would be an automatic like I'm done you know it's funny because like the the your answer to this question and then your answer to the query letter tip question um there are things that like if you are paying attention like seem obvious but I remember when I was reading Slush, like, I would say at least 60, maybe 70% of query letters just didn't follow, like, basic structure yeah. and guidelines. And it's super, e like, there are a lot of writers that are not on Twitter, um, mm -hmm. which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But it's super easy with the internet to find things out. Like, you type it in Google, and you get answers. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's frustrating sometimes to the basics are just not even it's it's almost like to to an agent if you get something like that say for example that doesn't have the story in it or you know a blurb or anything about the story in the query letter you're kind of like well if they're not going to do the work to write the query letter what kind of work are they going to do if they work with an editor at one of the 
you know, big publishing houses. That's a little scary. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So what are the last couple of books that you read? I guess I should say published book <laughs> that you read that you really enjoyed. Okay. I'm going to preface this with, I don't have time to read books, <laughs> but I listen to them on Audible. That's what I do too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm constantly reading either for my clients or, mm -hmm. you know, the things that I have, um, request, hold on. I can tell you exactly what, cause, um, one was the roommate. Um, mm -hmm. that was so That's good. good. Mm -hmm. Um, DJ D. Smiter was like, you have to read this book. And I was like, okay. And I was, uh, it was so good. Um, I'm also, I'm almost finished with Hood Feminism, mm -hmm. which is so, so good. I actually bought it from both of my sisters for Christmas. <laughs> um, the Worst Best Man. Oh, okay. Yeah. That is so funny. Who's the author on that one? Mia Sosa. Oh, okay. Yeah. That is great. If you want like a, a rom com, uh, I mean, I mean, it, the trope is just, you know, if you like tropey stuff, but it's funny. Mm -hmm. um, and let me see one more. Um, well, the Cemetery Boys, oh, I, yeah. I listen to, and the Hating Game. Oh, okay. Go on. Yeah, and Grown. Like those Grown. are. That's like the last like two months. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I buy audio. books. <laughs> yeah, I listen to audiobooks too. Um, I mean, that's the way, main way I consume published books. Yeah. And um, you yeah, know, doing so. laundry or cooking or you know driving, I just put mm -hmm. it on and listen to it. I used to be horrible at listening to them. I would be like, I was almost like a kid. You'd read them a story, you'd like zone out, and start falling asleep. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah a, lot of people, a lot of people say that and they're like oh I can't do audiobooks I can't focus and it's I feel like it's like anything you kind of have to train your brain mm -hmm. um and so it's it's not something that a lot of people find easy right away so yeah for sure yeah but those are all really good I um I'm a judge for the Audis this year and so since so the list yeah, a, a long list too. So since some sep September, that's all I the, all the books that I've consumed have been audiobooks for the Audis. I almost okay. said the genre, which we're not allowed to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't tell us. You can tell us later. <laughs> oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. So, um, hopefully, I mean, either way, by the end of this month, I will be listening to audiobooks that I choose again. <laughs> So yeah, I bet though. I bet though you're listening to some that you may not have listened to that are really good. There are definitely some I have I would not have picked up um, that have been interesting and made me think about things, and also even like made me think about stories that I have kind of in my hopper, you know, that I want to write um, and looking at them in different ways. So yeah. Um, Especially because it's a genre that probably accounts for like 10% of my regular reading. So mm -hmm. um, it's good. Yeah, I've to tried to add some adult. Um, I, you know, I used to just listen to YA. Um, and I started off actually listening to nonfiction audible book, audiobooks. Um, you know, Michelle Obama's was fabulous. Um, mm -hmm. And Trevor Noah's was, oh gosh, that was so good. Um, so fiction took me a little bit to get into, um, but I do kind of go back and forth now between YA and adult just to keep myself fresh on, you know, both mm -hmm. age categories. And I think um, these days, especially since so many people are listening to podcasts, they're mm -hmm. more likely to listen to nonfiction audiobooks because it's kind of a similar experience. Yeah. I have not gotten into podcasts yet. I've oh, listened to a couple. Want, I have recommendations. Yeah, so. I don't have to ask you. <laughs> um, I'm obsessed with your wrong about. I love it so much. Ooh. Yeah. yeah so it just, yeah. it takes, well, this is the podcast hour now. Um, so <laughs> it takes, um, like cultural events that people have misconceptions about Ooh. and okay. dig in deep. Um, so one of the first episodes I listened to was actually like a two-part episode on the Tuskegee experiment. Oh. Do you know about the Tuskegee experiment? I've heard of it. Um, I... Yeah, because yeah. 
people get it confused with just geeky airmen, which is it's a totally different thing. Um, it's basically where uh, it was a, a let's see, how do I say this? Um, it was meant originally to observe the effects of untreated syphilis on a population. Oh, okay. And um, using all black men as the subjects. Um, mm. So yeah, it was, it was really good deep dive. It was like um, talking about basically how the experiment got where it was and where everything went wrong with it and all that kind of stuff. And um, and then I started listening to all their other episodes and I was like hooked. They have a great Diana series that would, like really took off last year, Princess Diana. So yeah. Oh, I'll definitely. I wrote it down so I can check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Usually in my car, I'm like an audio book or. Okay, I'm serious XM now. Mm, yeah. I know. I, I had I had the trial and then now I actually have it. Not sure. But like <laughs> I listen I listen to the hair band station. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like all the all the old rock and roll that I used to listen to. Yeah. Just like one or the other. So nice. podcasts are good. All right, yeah. I'll check that one out. I will say the the most recent ones were on Newsboys, and I I didn't find those as interesting. So mm -hmm. just a heads up, like <laughs> I could go past those. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well, we are pretty much out of time. Um. Tamara asked a question. I think you can answer real quick, so we'll answer yeah. that. Um. On your not looking for a list, do you have werewolves? I are do. you open to a story that has shifter a shifter as a background character? depends how much they are a part of it um if if they're a huge part of it even though background characters are usually you know you, you get glimpses of them um if you just get a glimpse of them sure um if they're the main focus or they're shifting or you know then no okay if it's like important to the plot yeah i i have i have some favorite shifter stories so i really have a hard time <laughs> yeah and and I don't I have vampires now because I actually have a middle grade vampire story that I am uh, subbing for one of my clients right now, so that's kind of why I've taken vampires off the table for mm -hmm. for the moment. But mm -hmm. um, you know, and I love you all know I love Twilight and vampires, so yeah. it's not that I don't like them. It's just <laughs> you know they they have their time and place sometimes. <laughs> All right. Um, well, that is all the time we have today. Thank you all so much um, for joining us tonight. Those of you who joined us live, if you're watching the replay, thank you for watching. If you're listening on podcasts, um, thank you for listening there too. So uh, Amy, thank you so much for taking your Saturday night out to talk with me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah. And um I guess that's it. I feel because like for Pub Talk Live, I have like all these different things I mention and I just I don't for this one. So I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> but um, we are doing, by the way, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. on this YouTube channel, um, me and Bess Carnan run um, Writing Wednesdays, which is just like a 90 minute virtual um, writing. What do you call them? Write in. There we go. Yeah. Um, so we do, we've that's been doing awesome. that every Wednesday since um, April. So we're going to keep doing those. So hopefully you'll join us. It's 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and then, of course, the next Pub Talk Live next Saturday is with uh, guest co-host um, uh, Aaron Entrada Kelly, uh, who is the first ever repeat guest of Pub Talk Live. She was previously a special guest and she's going to be a guest co-host this time. So, um, and then our special guest is going to be Reba Gordon, who is a, uh, a librarian at a middle and high school and has spent her entire career working in um, middle and high school and elementary school libraries. So we're going to talk about to her about her job. So hopefully you'll come back next Saturday. Tell your family you have a work meeting or something. <laughs> and join us. <laughs> All right. Everyone stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you next time. Bye.